My friend asked me, would I ever adopt? And I told him, I don't know. I'm not completely sure. The ironic thing is, I'm adopted. So this is my story and testimony. So it starts in Los Angeles, California, where I was born. I moved from there with my mother at the age of around two, and she got me when I was one month, right? So great woman. My mother it got me probably like in her 30s. And so very fair skin. <laughs> Beautiful woman, probably in her 30s. And then you have this dark skin, bright baby, you know, a ball of joy that is me, Winston. Um, changed my name, um, new start in Georgia, right? And so you always like watch, I guess like materials and you just get clues. I think the biggest clue is just the um, different in um, skin texture, uh, just pigment and color uh, with me and my mother. So I think um, when I was young, I had some like inklings of like, hey, am I adopted? And um, she said no. And a very funny story is that um, I think I was 14 and <laughs> my story is actually pretty tied to Harry Potter. So I was 14 and my grandmother was coming into town. I can't even remember what excuse that they gave me, but I remember uh, Harry Potter in particular because I was watching the Prisoner at Azkaban in our house while uh, my grandmother came and they had this like, not like a really like big announcement or anything, but it was just like, hey, you're adopted. And I was like, duh, Sherlock. <laughs> so if you just look at my family, um, you'll see I'm pretty dark. <laughs> so my mother kind of looks like, apparently my family is like West Indian, but very fair, um, probably like Hispanic or white in complexion, like European and nothing in me. So just in my mind, I always thought like, to even uh, my mother out, I was just like, uh, had to have like this really dark skinned father <laughs> and then you just get me. But there was like no mix or blend, right? And so there was no like true, like complex. I know a lot of people um, come from like the foster system when it comes to adoption or um, they're really bitter about like how they find out or um, they're just like old enough to like have trauma. But I think because my mother got me so young and my life was such a great experience, like truly, um, that I just love my life. I love my mother. That's why I call her like my mother. Even though we're not like blood and DNA, that is my mom, right? And so um, I get older, graduate college, and even um, just the trajectory of my life just had me not questioning like where I came from at all. And I still kind of don't, <laughs> but I did have an ex post graduation from college that was like, hey, you ever think about, I guess, reaching out to your birth family? And I was like, kind of like, nah. <laughs> but um, it did come up that my mother, uh, I guess like revealed, there was a lot of reveals in my life. I didn't think it was that shocking or whatever. But um, that, I think I have three brothers um, that are probably in like Oklahoma or something. And somehow I was born in Los Angeles. I don't know all the story. I think my last name used to be like a R name or something. Funny story. My mother said that she named me Winston because she didn't want my name to be ghetto or black because um, she didn't want people to be racist against me. And she gave me a white name. <laughs> So that on any application that I did for college or jobs, they will have to see me and boom, <laughs> that's that. But so I have three brothers and apparently my mother, uh, my birth mother, I don't know, whatever, um, was on like drugs. Drugs are bad. So you shouldn't do drugs. Just looking back at <laughs> just like the trajectory of my life, even um, my mother 
being a woman that was not able to bear children and choosing, I think she was in her 30s, maybe 40, like mid 30s um, when she got me. And the fact that she chose to take on like single motherhood and give me a new life. And even like my stepdad Drew um, coming into my life at a very early age, my life trajectory is totally um, different, right? Totally out there. Um, and I actually really relate to the story of Moses, right? Um, where you have um, the Pharaoh at the time killing all the Hebrew kids and uh, throwing them into the um, river to be eaten by crocodiles. And then you just have this hidden um, treasure coming out of there being the liberator of the entire nation. And so that's why I am so grateful and thankful and just glad at just like how my life turned out to be where I am in life and what I'm able to give back because suppose like my mother, uh, birth mother kept me. Who would want to be in an impoverished drug scenario when you can potentially give um, your children uh, to someone who cannot have children and who are at a better means to take care of them. So uh, continue on, I'm growing, I'm becoming a man, uh, doing whatever I'm doing, right? And uh, I'm doing stand-up comedy and I get asked to do an adoption gala. I was like, yes, at the opportunity to raise money for a good cause. And um, I will say literally, it was my best hosting set bar none all the shows I have ever done because there was such a mesh of like personal story, um, the atmosphere that was there that was so basically like just Christ-centered and so altruistic and giving and just to be a witness of that was so awesome. And one of the biggest things that I experienced there and learned there um, was this young woman that I met and she again was probably um, early uh, early 30s or like late 20s and said that she just read the Bible, heard a sermon um, about caring for the least of these and the call of the Great Commission. And um, I think um, just Jesus called in James 1, 27 about this is pure undefiled religion. Take care of the poor, take care of the widow, take care of the orphans. And so she also went into the adoption process. And um, crazy thing that I did learn, it actually costs less to have an abortion proceeding than it actually does to adopt somebody. So it's actually cheaper to take a life than actually make one, right? And so um, from there and her testimony was just so convicting about the Great Commission and how she just felt called to just adopt and just love my children and just, I felt a great like reflection of her experience, my experience, and like my mother's um, experience. And so the other day when my friend asked me, hey Winston, would you ever adopt? And I said, I don't know. I think it was this stigma that somehow this circumstance lessens the validity of the parental child relationship. But in reality, that's not true. And we see this um, in the Gospels when it comes to um, Peter and how he behaved with non-Jewish Christians. So Peter came from a Jewish background and then uh, you have your Gentile Christians converting who weren't Jewish, right? And so Jesus came to him in a dream God and um, said to them, eat of these uh, foods, right? And what did uh, Peter say? I cannot eat of these animals because they are common. Um, I am a Jew. And God's reply was, don't call anything God has blessed common. Anything that 
God has cleansed common. So it was a metaphor that people are not common if they are chosen and called by God. And so this, along with her testimony, my life actually turned uh, my heart to being more open to it. So the big um, scripture for today is just James 1, 27. This is undefiled, pure religion, taking care of the poor, the widow, and the orphan. And so, uh, just like we are called as Christians, as believers, to love, we are also called to take care of the poor, we are called to take care of the widow, and we're called to take care of the orphan. So, not in the um, <laughs> position to be a parent right now, but definitely open and willing to have children of my own, but also adopt um, other children who will also be my own. So make sure that um, our hearts are open to the call of the Great Commission that we have in Jesus Christ and that um, this is not optional, not calling everybody to adopt, <laughs> but um, what we do to the least of these, we are doing to Jesus. So thanks for watching. Make sure to click the like, subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. Um, Here's the subscribe button, here's more videos, here's playlists, and check out our next video where we are talking about what is the meaning of life in less than five minutes. Get at me.